He's looking for them. Good morning, as I say often, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Always, every time we're together, it's good to be with you. My name is Graham Moore. I'm a certified master of the Leadership Challenge, the world's most widely recognized leadership development program. That might sound like a big claim, but it, it's true. Over 40 years of research and millions of people have been involved, particularly two people who are sharing the screen with me at the moment, uh, uh, heavily involved in this. And the first one I'm going to refer to is Mohammed Shukri. Uh, how are you, Mohammed, in Bahrain today? I'm very happy to see you both and again engage with our audiences and viewers. Thank you very much, Mohammed. And Phoebe Francis, how are you today? I'm very well and uh, greetings to all. Nice to be with you in company having this conversation. Yeah, well, let's see Let's see where this conversation leads us today. And I think what we should look at, look at and explore is the day, a day in the life of a leader. Look, a day in the life, what about we do that, huh? Of course, leaders have got yes. many days, but let's look at a day in the life of a leader. How does that sound to you, Mohammed? Yeah, it's, it's, look, it sounds great, and I am curious to know uh, how will we uh, travel with this leader in his or her day? Well, we could say which leader, couldn't we? But we're not going to be specific about that. We're going to be looking a little bit more generally in the life of one day of a leader. Phoebe, how do you feel about this? Yeah, this is a fantastic topic, you know. We all are leading our lives and how are we doing in that everyday engagement with our fellow human beings whether it is at life or whether it is at work yep and what kind of impact our interactions are creating and this can set the tone the way in which the day is built up so having this conversation will definitely help our viewers as well as listeners mm -hmm. how they are impacting the environment in which they are working. Well, I'm going to suggest that the leader's day starts where? Not when he's at the office or she. Not when they're making those early morning phone calls or looking at those emails. I'm going to suggest that the leader's day starts in his mind, in his head, here. That's where it starts. And hopefully it doesn't start before he wakes up in the morning and hopefully it, does, it doesn't start uh, too early after he has woken up. But I really want to suggest this, and I know that for many of us for whom we, we love the work that we do, when we wake, just think about this, when you wake in the morning, is the thought in your mind, oh, my gosh, another day? Or do you wake excited and positive that you've woken yet another day to go and do what you love doing? Is that something you can relate to, gentlemen? Yeah. Yes, absolutely, yes. I, I like that um, really when you... Uh, Stand straight from your bed and before you stand up, actually, uh, sit straight from your bed before you stand up. Lots of uh, thoughts are pouring into your mind. And, of course, uh, there, there are so many responsibilities, things to do. After all, being a leader, you are also holding a position to yeah. fulfill targets, etc. But then if you are a leader, you will be excited because you know you are starting your day with a team that will accomplish everything in the best manner and they will learn as they go and you will be a leader in that yeah. case. Yeah, look, I think that many professions, even professions aside, but there are certain many occupations, uh, many callings in this life where people do wake up in the morning excited about what they're going to be doing because it's, this is their purpose. They're living their purpose. And uh, so it's not drudgery. It's not something that they have to do. They love doing it. And I, I really believe that 
leaders, and when we're in a leadership position, that's a great start to the day. Phoebe, what's your feeling about this? I, I like to uh, connect it again with uh, our, the leadership challenge and the f- first practice, model the way. How are you modeling the day, the start of the day? What, what way are you uh, uh, positioning it? First in your mind, and how it, next in your actions, you know. So how how can we model model the way for you as well as the people initially with the family? How are you modeling that day? And oh. that shapes and sets the tone. And similarly, when you are uh, going into your workplace, people are observing what kind of a state the leader is in this day. Are you... Uh, what, what what kind of person they observe walking in. So this sets the entire day for them also, you know, because we are, especially if we are holding positions of power in organization, we are being observed, we are being uh, yep. seen, and our, 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 our body language is looked at yep. each and every day moment of the day so modeling so what what am i modeling at this stage that so comes let, to my mind so let's okay let's just start at home let's before he gets to interact with the others and i'm going to suggest that one of the questions that the leader should be asking himself at home in the morning when he's preparing maybe he's as he's having or she's having breakfast a simple question and we call this a self coaching question how can I be a better leader today than I was yesterday? And I want in that, having just said that, not just to let that statement go out. Oh, I've said that. So therefore magic will appear. But to then think about really what could I do? And it might be a matter of recalling something that happened the day before and thinking that didn't quite work. So I need to make sure that I improve on my communication in that environment when I'm there again. Or I don't know that I listened enough in the meeting yesterday. So perhaps I need to make sure that I listen more. I don't know that I encouraged this person enough yesterday when I did this and did that. So it's really a a little bit like being specific about the sort of things that you can do. And I think the more specific we are, the more likely we are to achieve those things rather than just saying, I'm going to be a better leader today than I was yesterday. But think about what you can do to do this and then do those things as well as everything else that you that you have. Leadership is, of course, it's a, it's a mindset. It's a behaviour. So let's go through the day. You're going to drive to work or he's going to catch the metro or wherever you're going to get to work. And in that process, if, let's just say that he's on the metro or wherever else getting to work where he doesn't have to be physically concentrating on the traffic. That's an opportunity to think about the day that lies ahead. But he's also... I like that very much. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I like... I Sorry, sorry to jump in. I like that very much. In fact, it's a way of encouraging the heart. A leader, the leader, is encouraging his or her heart because... We might, you know, uh, regurgitate on things that went wrong yesterday, and we might be stuck in what went wrong yesterday, in your opinion, or you didn't measure up to whatever you actually wanted. That conversation didn't go well yesterday. That meeting took longer than it, it, it should have. I ignored the question by one of my team members because I was busy with the agenda. This is what a true leader really thinks and reflects of, and it's a healthy, uh, healthy uh, phenomenon. Uh, in order for it not to become um, a disease that you know haunts you and holds you back, that waking up afresh and asking that question: How can I be a better leader today? Because every day is a new opportunity. I felt that it was really good, really good what you said just now. There's always an opportunity to fix things and make things better. Let me just make a – I really like what you just said, and I want to make this this comment about what the points were. This is not an exercise, exercise in self-criticism when he's reflecting on what he did or didn't do yesterday, right? This is an exercise in how can I do it better? How could I improve? Mm. Oh, oh, my gosh, I interrupted that person. Or, oh, gosh, I shouldn't have done this. 
I don't know, what can I do better than I did yesterday? This happened, okay, we're going to make it a better day today. And that process can be done, as I said, in the metro or someone else is driving. Not so much when you're driving yourself because you've got to concentrate on the road and make sure you get there safely. We understand it. So let's then see that the leader has arrived at work and walks into the foyer of the office. What should the leader be doing? A uh, coffee machine. <laughs> okay. I mean, coffee machine where, where the colleagues are, I mean, yes. Interact with them but, and but, not go to business directly to business. Start conversations, coffee. So even when he walks into the foyer, there may not be a coffee machine in the foyer. That may... Okay. <laughs> you got it. But, but even in the foyer of the, of the building, who is he going to see? In many cases, the security guard. Yes. And certainly the likely the receptionist or other staff, right? Maybe the receptionist hasn't started yet. Maybe he's early. But the security guard is going to be there. So what should he do as he walks past the security guard? Smile. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hang on. And, uh, but hang, oh, hang on. No, uh, I am the most important person. Why should I smile at the security guard? Give me a break. Of course, right? You can make, we've talked about this, you can make his day by smiling at him as you walk in and smiling at the other people as you walk in to the lobby, the foyer, the reception area. And when you're in the elevator, Talk to me about the elevator. What's going to happen? Yeah, th this is something where I just want to highlight one aspect. You know, quite often uh, when when we experience going into the elevator, we, we have pin drop silence. Every, everyone serious standing like that and yeah. going up. So it is that moment where you can bring a lighter conversation smile starting with that smile that pleasantness yeah and i'm sure it is going to uh, create s uh, moments of laughter moments of uh, engagement each other a simple question can uh, can, can create that just just be uh, you know uh, just model the way asking a simple question what are you all doing what is happening around you? How how, how are you? And, and creating a conversational space. How, what is how was your weekend? If it's the beginning of the working days, how was your weekend? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And look, having said this, Phoebe, it's really important that the first the first time, yes, you can you can do this. But when the leader's been doing this for a, a while, when the other people are in the elevator, they will openly and freely engage with him won't they? Because they expect that he's like that rather than this, the person who is closed, focused on the, getting to the meeting half an hour late uh, or whatever, whatever, and not connecting with other people. So they will get to know that he's always like this. So then he, the elevator oh, says, okay, have a good day, guys. And off he goes when his floor has been presented when the elevator doors open and he walks into his office. Let me just give you a, a quick story of someone some years ago who was saying to me, my staff are not engaged. This man was the CFO of the organisation. He said, my staff are not engaged. I keep, we keep trying to do things to engage them and uh, they just don't want to. No, no, no. So I then said to him, I want you to tell me what you do or what happens when you come into the office in the morning. First thing, oh, well, I walk in, I've got my briefcase with me, I guess, and I walk in, I walk past the staff and I go to my office and I open the door and go in and open my briefcase and sit down. And I, I see, see what he just described was the difficult situation. I'm sure I wouldn't want to be there with one of the staff. So I said, I want you to do something different from tomorrow. When you come into the office, I want as you walk past each of the staff member, I want you to engage in conversation with them, even if that conversation is just "Hi, how are you doing? Hi, how was your weekend?" As as Muhammad has just said, "Hi, how's that project going? You're making progress on it." Interact with them on your way through. It doesn't have to be long. It can it just often be a smile and a "Hi, how are you today?" And he then said to me when I saw him next time that 
behaviour was transformational in terms of how the staff related to him. This is what leaders do. Well, you've got to, we're talking about leadership being a relationship. This is the relationship in the morning. Good morning. How are you? You don't just walk into your office, claim your space there and put your briefcase down and open up. No. Relationship. Phoebe. Amazing. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, that that leads to that that relationship part is something which uh, I think um, every leader should focus. And it helps in the next practice. You know, we we, we know that. If we have the relationship, we, we we are able to communicate with my colleagues, my family much better to inspire a shared vision. So that is the second practice which uh, which we want to bring in. And again, we, we can have these conversations continuing in our workplace. So uh, what, what what am I inspiring with my team? So as we mentioned in the uh, in our conversations, in our workspace, in our family space, how can I inspire the people around us? And yes, that can be done by simple questioning, you know. Yeah. For example, asking a question, what have we, what is a book which you are reading or listening? Uh, what, which podcasts are you listening? Who are a couple of your interesting authors? And build upon that conversation with your fellow members. So here is... Uh, uh, different ways in which we can inspire. And that starts with the relationship building process. The, the relationship can also be, for instance, when we're talking to the team members, an individually situ here's an example. You might even say to one of the team members, so how are you going with that new client? Simple. How are you going with a new client? Not tell me the results that you've got and how much uh, business we're going to get out of them. But simply, how are you going with a new client? And then you might even be saying, so what are the challenges now that this has happened? And you're genuinely talking to them about what's going on for them. So let's just assume now that the day is moving on and it's 9.30 and it's time for the team weekly team meeting. So what might happen in the weekly team meeting? It's 9.30, it's in the meeting room. What's, what's going to happen First, um, as when you said the room meeting room, the word came. Uh, the word panic came to me. So panic room, meeting rooms can be panic rooms, right? And uh, uh, some of the employees might have not followed up on the actions on the uh, previous agenda, and uh, or they are rushing to do so and or finding excuses and. Other employees are good with that, but still they don't know what the meeting will come up with and how tension. But I assume these things will be far less uh, uh, in the presence of a leader and more in the presence of a manager who is only fixated on the points. So it shouldn't be a panic room if you are a leader. But let's say it's a meeting time and what will happen really? Yeah. I'm, I know what I'm going to suggest, but I'll let, let me ask Phoebe what he's going to suggest that will happen first. Yeah, so again, Graham, in, in uh, any meeting room, this is my uh, uh, spending some time for connection building, you know. So that is the first thing which I will yeah. be involved in. Yeah, good. And, yeah. and uh, again, if, what, if about is, uh, what about first? What about first? Yeah, that's what that, that that's what I'm saying. You know, connection I'm building process. That. I'm going to start earlier than that first. We've got the 9:30. What's going to happen first? The leader will be there early. Yeah, that's yeah, likely to be the case. And because he is two minutes early, everybody else will be also early because they want to be part of the process. And I really believe that when the leader is be, is modelling the leadership behaviours. They know that his behaviour is such that he doesn't come to a meeting 10 minutes late. He doesn't come talking on his mobile phone as he comes into the room trying to sort some other problem out. He comes well organised and ready for a meeting that everybody's going to enjoy and look forward to. And so when he comes in, they will likely all be there waiting for him when he arrives in early. And when he comes in, he closes the door and they all start because they're all ready for it. And then, Phoebe, what is he going to say? What's the thing that's going to say? He's the real yeah, so, is important, right? Exactly. And, 
And Graham, one aspect is, you know, uh, you know, I, I will call the check-in process, which we, we all have to do in most of the cases. And, and another, uh, following that, you know, I will be uh, uh, continuing as five questions, which, which is coming to my mind. One is, what is going well with, with respect to our work? Then second, as a leader, where can I help? That is second question, which I will be asking. Then what are our top priorities uh, these days, which we have to focus on? Uh, is, is there anything uh, new or upcoming, which the team like to put on my radar as a leader? And that sets, and, and is there anything else? Is there something which we haven't touched upon? So these queries will help the people to be more open up and and celebrate you know first of all again celebrate uh, is something which we have to do in the uh, morning what, what is going well we have to uh, acknowledge appreciate that wonderful things the people have done to the team so there are the two things that i think we have talked about this before about a meeting is starting and one of those is that i've said before i th i think one really good way to set the tone the atmosphere, the climate, if you like, in the meeting room is for the leader to say, I'm, we're going to go around the room this way. I, I want everybody, you've got one minute to, to talk about something really positive that's happened in your life in the last week. I want you to share that with us now. So one minute, bump, 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 all the way around. When we're talking positively about that, it's going to lift the tone of the meeting. Everyone's going to be feeling, wow, that happened to you? That was fantastic. Oh, wow, that's really good. So they, their mind is moved away from the pressures of work at that stage, their mindset is going to be elevated to an area of, of ease and comfort and the good things that are happening. Another way the, in, in the meeting and whether it happens first up or not is, is for discussion, I suppose. But it, I'm now highlighting one point that you made, and that is to say to the team members, okay, I want you to identify one really good thing that one of your team members has done in the last week since we were together. So let's hear from you about what you've observed from the other people in this room or even in other departments, the good things that they have done. And so we can, as we say, encourage their heart. So we can acknowledge the good things that have been done. This is, setting again, setting a positive tone about what we're going to, how the day is going to be. Then mm -hmm. what might happen? Can I come then back to the point about, sorry, Mohammed, make the point about a leader saying, uh, do you want my help? I think that that's a really good idea, but probably he would be saying, as you always know, if you need me to help you, I'm always here. And if you need me to help, you, you can always come to me. Rather than him wanting to find out more and then try and buy in, you've got any problems, you know you got now you know where you've got to come. If you know, got any, want to need help or advice, you know where you've got to come, and I'll be here for you. Muhammad, I cut you off. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, I like that last part. Uh, not that I am ready to give you the solution right now. Immediately tell me, how can I relieve you? No, no, no. That's not growth. Sure. All right. So, uh, but the meeting is over. Midday is over. We are approaching the end of the day, a uh, working day. How would, would a leader behave in the end of the day? I am curious also. I want to make the most of that one day in our one episode. Yeah. Oh, my God. My, is that the time? Oh, my gosh. So pleased I can go home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. So, Phoebe, what do you think might be the uh, an action that he or she could take at the end of the day? Yeah, it, it, it is reflection time, you know. So uh, uh, the three W's come to my mind. What, so what, and now what? So as a leader, you know, have I, uh, again, I, I, I want to move into the uh, third practice of the leadership challenge, challenge the process. Did I, did I challenge myself and my team? And uh, Graham, you, you mentioned that, you know, uh, where, where we have to uh, provide, you know, in case of difficulties, I am here. But, uh, but you have the full autonomy to take decisions. So that is challenging the process, a, a perspective which I just want to highlight. And, you know, that is something which a leader have to see. What, what was the day like? What, what, what For example, you, you know, there, there are uh, questions. Have I asked what if? What, what would 
I do if I knew I could not fail? What, what, what kind of constraints have we overcome? So, you know, these are uh, leading to challenging the process with respect to my actions during the day. And second aspect is, you know, how did I enable my team so that they can take actions on their own? H have I empowered them? Have I developed my team's capability? Have I looked into their learning needs? Have, have I supported them in that process? So th that leads to enabling others to act, the fourth practice. And look, look back, what, where and when did I encourage the heart? So I will definitely look into, as, as Muhammad mentioned, what, what, what ways have my action unraveled? And again, thinking back, what can I do differently, better next, next time? So this will be my uh, process going forward through the day as a leader. They're very good. I also, so Muhammad, sure. I also want to uh, uh, reflect this on public speaking. In public speaking, uh, when we teach how to uh, structure your speech, we give extra emphasis on the opening and the ending because recency and primacy are the most uh, uh, memorable parts of any speech. Often, more often than not, speakers focus on decorating, designing a really powerful opening. But when it comes to the end, they give way less attention. They abruptly finish the speech and say, thank you for listening, and that's it. No, don't do that. This is the last part they have heard and the most fresh one it will stay. So design the end of the day in that particular way. So we, our rule is usually try to connect the two. If you start with something, try to connect it with the end. If you had a meeting around something, maybe you should uh, leave that uh, employee by asking him, okay, good job on that. Again, good job on that. All right. You already said that at the beginning, but try to end with a positive note at the end. And maybe uh, Graham, can, you can enlighten us on some of the important things to do at the end. So, OK, that's really good. And I'm glad you made the analogy between public speaking and, and, and leadership and the leader's day. One thing that I think is important in the leader's day is let's just assume maybe he's got uh, uh, seven people in the team. No, let's make it 14. That the number works better. Uh, I know, oh no, actually 10, 10, 10, 10 works better, I'm sorry. Um, I would be, as the leader, I would be spending at least half an hour a day with individuals in a coaching process. That's what I would be doing as a leader and I would be making sure that that half hour with that person happened every day and I would do that every two weeks, right? So they've got half an hour of my time. Now, coming to the end of the day, and you just made the point, you call it primacy, so that when people leave, they know what's the what, sorry, recency, they know that remember the most important thing. Two two things that I know of that leaders do. I know there are some leaders who stand by the door as the people are leading and they say, Thank you very much for all you you did today. They physically stand by the door and thank the people as they are leaving. You think this is crazy? It's not crazy. I know people tell me my manager used to stand at the door and say thank you for what I did today. The other example is this. We, I know that there are people who may have a lot of people, others in their broader team. Let's just say that the, the person runs an organisation that has 400 staff, 1,000 staff. I know of leaders in that organisation at the senior level who will write handwritten notes to staff members at the end of the day, and I know one particular gentleman wow. who will not leave his office. Okay, he's got a lot of staff, but he won't leave the office until he's written six handwritten notes at the end of the day to six staff members who have been referred to him because of what they have done. The numbers of staff in the organisation could be two or 3,000. But how effective is this? The last thing he does is to thank individuals in a handwritten note. The end of the day is really important. You want the people you're leading to leave the day thinking that they've done really well and look forward to coming into you the next day to work with you rather than thinking, oh, my gosh, here I go into the slave pit again. No, you want them 
and you create the environment for them to want to come to work, to want to perform at their best. This is what leadership is all about. They want to perform. I mean, leadership is the art. This is the definition, Jim Cousins and Barry Posner, leadership is the art of mobilising others to want to struggle for shared aspirations. And that can happen by your actions throughout the day, but particularly at the end of the day. Phoebe. Uh, it, 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 it brings a, a, st a story to my mind. You know, I had a departmental head. You know, around 2 to 30, he, he just walks into the team members and just check in with everyone. How is uh, everything going on? Is there any work which is to be completed? Is there something which um, you need a help in any? And what happens in the process is uh, he makes sure that everyone completes and leaves the office on time yep. and ensures, yalla, let us go together. Yep, yep. yep. And, you, you know, that brings, and sometimes if you have... Uh, some pending work. This is the question which he asked. Can it wait? Is it urgent? If it is urgent, give it to me. I will do it. Well, <laughs> and, uh, no, no. And, no. So maybe because this is basically the workload aspect, managing the workload with the people. And second is helping in the process to make sure that everyone have the time to take the break from the work, giving a freshness as they leave. Absolutely. They should be empowered to achieve wonderful, great, positive things beyond what they thought they could achieve, and they will be recognised and re re for what they have achieved, and they'll look forward to coming in the next day. Gentlemen, our time is up. One final thought from Muhammad. No, but he's th the day is not over. He, the day is not only at work. Now the leader oh, is driving yeah. back home. So oh. my final thought will be, you're oh. going home, all right? As a leader, you are, uh, you, you are with your family, you are your loved ones, the ones who also empowered you and um, are missing you. And there are folks that have, waited all this long so that you are back to them from work. So don't bring work there. No, no, no. no. And uh, give them the time they need and they want. And this is also for yourself. And give your body a chance to rest and free your mind from everything that went, everything that happened. Just make a pause. Absolutely. Because tomorrow you're going to wake up again and you can review. You don't have to review everything now or re. <laughs> Do a report to yourself. Don't don't do that. Can I make this a recipe? Look, I'm really pleased that that's the way you're wrapping the, the day up for the leader. And I should have said this earlier because when you're driving home, it, because you, that was the key for me, and I remember a, a managing director saying to me some years ago that uh, I'd been coaching and uh, he'd, he'd made some significant improvements. He said, Graham, the best part of my day is when I'm driving home and I reflect on the great things that my team achieved that day. Not what he did, but the great things, the positive things that his team achieved that day. Gentlemen, Beautiful. thank you for your time. And we will be together again next week. You know, I would love to hear from anybody who's listening who would like to share with us some of the things that their leaders or that they do in the day to make life better for others around them. So send me an email, graham at leadershipchallengemiddleeast.com. I would love to hear from you and we'll share that next week. Gentlemen, again, thank you for your wisdom and I hope you have a great week. And a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you all. Subscribe. Yeah. <laughs>